Hey guys, I'm glad you're here and welcome to this training that we're going to do today on the tone curve in Lightroom. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, then come on, let's do this. I don't know what you're waiting for. It's, uh, it's nice for me to see the numbers increase. That's always fun. But uh, by subscribing, you'll get notified as to when I have new videos that can keep you uh, updated and also help you to continue learning uh, Lightroom and photography so that uh, you can become the best photographer that you can be. So let's get started. Um, so the tone curve panel uh, is often one that intimidates a lot of people. And the reasons uh, the reason for that is because it is it looks a little more scary than it really is and so as we dive in let's kind of uh, let's kind of go over what it is what it does how things work and then you'll hopefully start to see uh, some creative ways in which you can use it to make your pictures better so let's look at it really quick and, and if you'll notice basically it's a graph and uh, the curve is the line that goes from the bottom left hand corner to the top right hand corner um, and that line indicates uh, how you are going to manipulate the tones in your image. The bottom left side of that graph and of that line represents the darker tones. The middle represents the midtones, and the right side represents the highlights. And so kind of that's basically what a tone curve is. Um, as you click on the line and drag up, you add brightness or you add uh, whatever the channel is set to. As you drag down, you darken brightness or you remove uh, whatever that channel is set to. We'll talk about channels a little bit later. Um, but, but just for the basic purposes, uh, let me just grab a hold of this line and drag up. And I'm in the lower portion. And if you look over at this color bar, these color bars, you'll notice that the darker uh, colors are starting to brighten. By dragging in the bottom left-hand side of that line, uh, dragging it up, I'm adding brightness to those darker colors. So let me turn it off and turn it back on. And you'll see that, that dark, those darker bars lift. Now, the, the pure black bar doesn't change at all. Um, and, and I'll show you how to change those, and that will have to happen in the other curve. Um, but, uh, but that's how you would lighten your darker tones of your image. Now, if you wanted to lighten the brighter tones or the highlights of the image, you'd come up here and you'd drag this up as well. And so this M looking curve right here basically lifts the dark tones as well as lifts the brighter tones. So let me turn it on and off. And you can see all of those middle bars of color have been brightened. Okay, so to zero this out, I, I just double click on the line itself. Um, or I can double click on the sliders. Now, that's one thing you'll notice. So we're in the region curve. There are two curves. If you're in Lightroom 4 or later, there are two curves. There is the region curve and the RGB or point curve. And we'll get to that one in a second, but we are in the region curve. And in the region curve, you'll notice that as I highlight over the line, uh, a word appears at the bottom of the graph, and that word corresponds with a slider. So we have shadows, we have darks, we have lights, and we have highlights. You'll also notice that a white kind of envelope or bubble appears around the line as I drag it up and down. Those are the limits, the maximum I can drag the curve up or the maximum I can drag the curve down. And those limits correspond with the slider. So if I click right now and drag all the way to the, uh, the highest point, you'll see that the, sh the light's shadow, which is currently hi highlighted, will go all the way to plus 100. So let me do that. I'll drag all the way up to plus 100. What that's telling me is I have lightened the, sh the highlights to the brightest point that this curve will allow me to lighten them. And if you look at it, it's basically taken that 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 highest bright tone bar and made it completely white. So if I turn that off, turn that on, it's brightened all of them, but it's made this one especially white. Okay, I can also zero this out by double clicking on the slider. So the regions curve, what 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 can it do for you? Um, basically, the benefits of the region curve is it is doing something similar to what some of these sliders in here can do. And so 
<clears throat> for example, on this image where let's say I wanted to add a little bit more contrast, but yet my contrast is cranked all the way to 100. I also don't want to deepen the blacks because as I do that, as I drop this, I start to lose kind of that light and airy feel, feel that I have in this image. So another way that I could add more contrast uh, without, you know, darkening my darks, without kind of um, slamming my, my blacks down, is I can come up here and I can increase the brightness of my highlights and then I can darken the shadows. And what that creates is kind of an S-curve, which creates contrast. So let me turn that on and off. So there's the before, there's the after. So it still retains kind of that light and airy feel to the image, but yet I've, I've brightened it a little bit because I, I drug the highlights up. So I brightened up the brighter tones, and then I darkened the dark tones. And, and so it's kind of just a subtle way that you can add more contrast or brighten or darken the image without touching these sliders here. Now the region curve is a curve that I don't use very often. And so, and so as I teach you these things, this might be just the curve that you kind of get to know, um, but maybe don't use as often. The curve that, that is used the most, and I'll click on it now, is the point curve or the RGB curve. And you'll see where it says channel right here. It says RGB, so that's where the RGB comes from. And then it's also called a point curve. And the reason for that is because you can actually click and create anchor points anywhere along this line. So this curve becomes more powerful because those envelopes that limit my up and down movement are gone. And by creating anchor points, I can now precisely determine where I want my brightness or my darkness to come. All right, so double clicking on these points gets rid of them. And then you'll notice in the bottom corner I have a point and in the top right hand corner I have a point. So if I come back to this uh, image right here, how I can lighten up my true black point is by taking this very bottom point and raising it up. And you'll notice that my image no longer has a true black. I can do the same with the top point. I can drag this down, and you'll notice that my image no longer has a pure white. Both of them are simply a shade of gray. And there's some value in that, in knowing how to do that and, um, and being able to do that, which I'll talk about later. But that is how you'd get rid of a true black point or a true white point in your image, is coming in here and dragging. Now the RGB, uh, when, when you're in the point curve and you're set, your channel is set to RGB, it will act very much like the region curve. The, the, the benefits of being in here is that S curve that I, whoop, why don't I go in this image and create it? That S curve that I create, I can be much more precise with it. So let's say I create this S curve, but let's say I, wanna, I want to darken the midtones a little bit. So if I click in here, and drag down, I darken the midtones. Well, I don't love that, so that didn't do anything for me, so I'll get rid of that. But let's say I don't want to have a pure white. So let, let me click up here and drag my pure white point down, okay? And look how that creates kind of this cloudy feel to the image. Let me turn that on and off. And it, al it almost kind of isolates the couple. So can you see how I can start to get really creative with this curve to make my images really unique? Let's go to, let me get rid of these. Oops, uh-oh, I got rid of that top point. Let's go create that back. Get rid of this one. Okay, let's go to this last image. And so, so what I did in that last one was to kind of create a vintage look where there's no true black point and no true white point. And so let's take a look at this image. Let me create a copy of this image and let me do that. Let me take away, oops, I didn't click on the right spot. Let me take away the black point. Okay, and I'll just move in just a bit. And let me get rid of this white point as well. Right there. So by taking my curve and doing that, what I've created is kind of this flat or matte look or vintage look to my image. And so let's compare the two. That is with the curve in that position. Here is with a regular curve. 
So can you see how it's kind of given it that vintage look? Now, you may love that look or you may hate it. It doesn't matter, to be honest with you. It's simply something that you can do to get creative. And for some images, it will work. And for some images, it will look absolutely stupid on. So, so the choice is yours. For this image, and I, I in fact specifically chose this image because I thought it would look, I thought it would have a good feel to it. I don't need to have deep blacks in this image. I don't need to have you know bright whites. I can have kind of that softness to it um, that kind of fits this feel, this kind of warm toned feel. And so that's why I chose this image. Um, other images, it may not work great at all. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so let's keep learning. So. If I'm in, if I'm in the RGB or point curve, so let's look at this girl right here, and notice my sliders—they're all zeroed out except for the exposure. I've dropped that just a bit, but let's say I wanted to add contrast. I could come in here, and I could make my S curve, okay, like we've already talked about and already learned. But let's say I want to warm this image up, and this is where you'd go into different channels. So you have a red channel, a green channel and a blue channel. Now the opposite of blue on the color wheel is yellow. So if I drag up, I add blue. Let's do that. So I'll drag in the middle. So this is to your midtones. If I drag up, I add blue, which is not what we want to do. If I drag down, I add yellow. So we'll just we can just drag down right there and I instantly warm that image up. So there's the before and there's the after. And I've done that all with a curve. Now let's say um, let me actually go to this image right here and and kind of staying with that feel. So I love this cute little picture of this little boy running through these kind of grasses and things. But let's say I want to give it a little bit of a fall look to it. Okay. So what I would want to do with that is I would want to add a little warmth to the shadows. I don't really want to add it to everything because if I do, maybe this white is going to go have this color cast to it. Maybe his skin is going to go too warm. And so the nice thing about the point curve is that I can create points and choose exactly where that warmth comes. So let's start with yellow. I want to bring it in the shadows. Remember the left hand side of a curve is shadows. So if I drag this down, Okay, so let's put it about right, that might be a little heavy, about right there. And then I don't want it to happen, I don't want any color shift in the midtones or in the highlights. And you can see how this curve bends, that it actually is bringing some of that yellow into the midtones and the highlights. I fix that by clicking, creating a dot, and dragging that back to the baseline right there. So I have this little bubble right here. And that is adding, I'll turn it on and off, a little bit of yellow or warmth into the, um, just into the shadows. Now, to create a warm feel, you don't just want yellow, right? Because that's just basically adding yellow. I want to add a little bit of red too, because red and yellow create this orangish color, which is kind of a fall look. So I'm going to do the same thing here in my red channel. If I drag up, I add just a little bit of red. Not, I don't want to add too much red. I want yellow to be the dominant color. And then again, same thing, get it out of my um, highlights. So let me turn the tone cur curve on and off. Can you see how through the shadow areas, I have simply added a little bit of warmth. No warmth is touching his shirt nor his skin. Now, if I wanted to add it to his skin, I could have done that. I could, I could come up here and do the same thing. So let's say I come up here and I add just a touch of red. Now notice I've got a hump here. It flats out at the midtones and then a hump here. So I've added red to my shadows, none to my midtones, and some to my highlights. And let's go back to the uh, blue channel and do the same thing. I'll drag down here so I add a little bit of yellow. Right about, well, that might be a little heavy. Let me turn it off and on. That, that's a little flat looking on his face. So let's go about right there, about right like that. So now I've added warmth to the highlights and to the shadows, but nothing to the midtones. So hopefully you can see the power of, of these tone curves, that you can put color exactly where you want it, or you can remove color from exactly where you want it. Have you ever shot in a mixed light situation where maybe you're using natural ambient light, but there's also... Um, 
an unnatural light source like a light bulb or an ink or a uh, tungsten light or or a halogen light or something like that and it creates these kind of blue shadows that that you have um, you could easily remove those by coming to the tone curve coming to the blue channel and dragging down on the lower part of the curve <clears throat> that is going to remove a blue tone from the shadows. So I hope you can see the power of the tone curve. I really feel like once you begin to use it, it's going to really help your, your images. Now, you're not going to use it on every image, of course, but it will allow you to get creative. One place that I use it a ton is I use it in presets. And the reason I like to use it is in presets is because it allows me to tweak an image and, and either add contrast or brightness or, or color shift or whatever I want without touching the, the sliders in the basic panel. And so then what the sliders in the basic panel become are simply ways that I can fine tune or tweak the image to get it exactly how I want it. So there's the tone curve. I hope that helps you kind of understand it and makes it less, I don't know, scary to go into and use. Um, again, subscribe to my channel. I think that uh, that you'll like the videos that I have coming up um, or the videos that are currently there. But thanks for being here, and I hope that you've learned a lot. Bye-bye.